everybody. Um, this is Auto Mechanics 101. <laughs> no, huh? <laughs> um, this is Tinker Mills Civic Technology Series, and this is uh, our Tech 102 class, Fiber Optic Technology, how to get the most out of Next Light, the new system getting installed by the city here by Longmont Power and Communications. So, um, I'm Steve Elliott. This is Scott Converse. Scott's the president of Tinker Mill. I'm the lowly underling. <laughs> and uh, we're here to hopefully tell you a little bit about how all of this stuff works. So, um, there's going to be some new words. Uh, we're going to put in your vocabulary today. These will all be on the quiz. And you'll learn these as we go through and talk about uh, what happens with fiber technology. It is a change, but it is change for the better. And we think we're pretty excited about this, and we hope you will be too by the end of uh, the um, seminar here today. So, first thing we need to know about is everybody's been talking about megas and gigas and googles and gagas and all that kind of stuff so what does that all mean so the first thing is a megabit or a actually a bit so a bit is one little itty bitty thing it's a one or it's a zero it's an on or it's an off and it's one piece of information that goes down the wire so that computers and uh, t cell phones and all that stuff can communicate with each other now that one bit is not much information. So they get grouped together in bytes, which is eight bits. And so we talk about bytes. So you gotta pay attention when somebody, a salesman at a store is giving you the pitch and whether they're talking about bits or bytes. So everybody at salesman school learns to talk about bits because they're bigger numbers. So bytes are always divided by eight. So, uh, and the reason you want a group of eight things is when you have a group of eight things, it gives you 256 different ways that you can set those ones and zeros so that they create in, uh, a nice little packet of information. For instance, if what you're sending is colors, a zero can be totally black, a 126 can be mid-gray, and 255 over here can be totally white. So that's one of the ways that you put a byte together to convey information. And if you have one of these bytes for blue and one for red and one for green, then you combine those things together and you can get every color in the rainbow. So that's why we put things together in bytes. So then we have megabits and gigabits. So megabits is a million, all right? So guess which one's the million? That would be the little guy there on the right. <laughs> and a gigabit is a billion. And we've been talking about Longmont becoming a gigabit city. And what that means is it can send a billion bits down the wire per second. That's a lot. That's fast. That's really fast. And this is the gigabit, so we all know about that. Okay. <laughs> so the first thing that's interesting to know about all this is that fiber optics is glass. And we're sending light down glass. Now, Everybody remembers your old phone network with copper, copper wires coming into the house. And copper is pushing electrons up and down that wire. This is pushing light up and down very thin pieces of glass. This, this is one little fiber here and it's about the size of a hair. And that's what's the, gigabit of information is traveling down is one of these. 
This right here is off the backbone from the city, which is 144 of these. And so it's an incredible amount of information that you can push up and down the wires. Um, also, there's another increase in speed that's pretty spectacular. And that is because we're pushing light up and down the wire. If you're pushing electrons, they can only go one way, right? But if you're pushing light, so here's a red light, here's a white light. If you're pushing light down the wire and you can push one up and one down and the waves just go right through each other. So it makes no difference on the speed whether you're going up or down. Now on things like cable, in order to get the speed up, they want to send out all of those video programs and all of that stuff. So they really are heavy on the push information to your house. That gets all of the speed. Going from your house up the other way is like salmon swimming upstream and you only get this much of the time to go that direction. So if you're at your house and you're trying to upload big movies or big pictures and that kind of stuff, it's gonna take longer than it takes for them to send a movie downstream to you. So fiber makes it equal and it's pretty cool. Um, here is a um, customized chunk of fiber that would be the exact length. When, when they take the order that says we want it, you call up and you say, I want it to come to my house, they figure out the distance between either the telephone pole or the underground pipe or whatever to your house and custom make a length of wire that's exactly the right length. And there's one of those little fibers in here. And we have this special deluxe flashlight. You notice this little tiny hole in the middle here. So if we put this on the end here, how's your eyesight? If you look directly down the end of this, there's a little tiny thing, literally the size of a hair, that's the red light coming through. Trust her. And <laughs> You can come up afterwards and uh, play with this and we'll be happy to let you look down the wire. I forgot to tell you, don't look directly into the laser with your remaining eye. <laughs> Oops, now I've done it. Okay. <laughs> so, um, Corning Glass invented this stuff in about 1970. And people had shown flashlights through glass before, but the problem was that the light wouldn't travel very far if there were impurities in the glass because the light would get absorbed by little chunks of stuff in the glass. What Corning did in the 70s was figured out how to make uh, glass fibers that were 99.9999999999% pure. And so that was the big breakthrough that allowed them to start sending light down fiber. It's so pure now that they can go across the Atlantic Ocean and send that light all the way across the ocean in a wire like this. So um, the other nifty thing is that the light is bouncing off of the edges of the fiber as it's going along. So there's, there's the glass in the middle and there's a little casing around the outside that's called the cladding. And the cladding basically looks like a mirror. And so the light keeps bouncing off the mirror as it's going through. The other thing is, you remember when you were in high school and you used to shine the light through a prism and it would break it all out into the colors of the rainbow? Well, you think about this, here's, here's a yellow one, here's a blue one, here's a red one each one of those think of as a different channel. So you can not only send just one white light or one red light down the thing, you can have a red one and a blue one and a yellow one and a green one. So you can have multiple channels of information going down the same wire. All down this little itty bitty thing the size of a human hair. So fiber is way cool. So, um, 
Here's some speed comparisons for you. Is this going to work? There we go. So, here is a really slow copper wire modem. Here's what you can get from CenturyLink, 4 megabits. Here's what you get from Comcast, 15 megabits. Here's what a business can get from Comcast if they pay extra money. And here's a gigabit. <laughs> so you get the picture? <laughs> so here's a speed comparison that we did here, which was Captain America movie, a two hour long high definition movie. And to download this thing from Comcast at 15 megabits a second took 41 minutes. Still takes you two hours to watch the movie. But to download it off of the gigabit network, your fiber was 37 seconds. So why do you need all this? So if you think about the history of the internet, does anybody remember back in the last century, 1995, if you were hooked up on the internet, you could send an email and it could be text. If you got really excited, you could send a picture about the size of a postage stamp and it wasn't very good quality, right? So a few years later, <laughs> a few years later, we got up to, oh, you could send a picture this big, wallet, you know, photograph size. And then eventually, turn of the century, people started sending videos, but they were about this big too. If you blew them up the size of the screen, they were really jaggy. Now, if you think about what's going on, all of the video is full screen, full size, and usually in pretty good shape. So that takes an incredible amount of data that we're pushing up and down our um, connection. So the thing is that we have one of the guys who, when we were putting this together, Dixon was saying, yeah, at my house, there's me and two teenage kids, one of which is supposed to be doing homework, the other one's playing games, and they're always coming down the stairs going, Dad, are you doing something on the internet? Because I'm trying to play a game here and I'm losing and it's all your fault because I can't be as fast as the other guys on the game, you know? So it's not just one computer in a house anymore. People have more stuff going on and they're sending stuff up and they're bringing stuff down. And if you have a home office and you're trying to send large pictures to a client or something like that, you need this kind of speed. And the other thing that's going to happen as we start, everybody gets uh, this service, you'll be able to start doing things like really good video conferencing with four or five people, six, 16, all right? And so you can have online meetings that'll really start to be worthwhile and you won't have to be traveling to go to those meetings and all that sort of thing. So you need the speed and you're going to need it. And it's going to be um, here, according to the schedule, from uh, Longmont Power and Communications. Has everybody seen the map that says we've broken the city up into six different zones? And you can go to the map and you can see when your zone is going to come up. Part of the problem is that many, many people, as each zone comes available, more people are signing up than they had anticipated and they're actually getting more crews that they're hiring on to be installing those things faster, which is a good thing. So we like it that everybody in Longmont is going to be signing up for this. So uh, some more words. Uh, people know about the cloud. Do I need to talk about the cloud? I got one yes. Do I need a... Does anybody need some help on the cloud? Thank you. <laughs> so 
the whole idea is that at some computer system somewhere, anywhere, um, you can store your videos, your um, pictures, your documents, and they just sit out there. And it could be Seattle, and it could be here somewhere in Longmont, it could be somewhere in Denver, it could be anywhere. The neat thing is that no matter where you go, if you're hooked up to the internet, you have access to all of your files. So um, the thing is, of course, that means an awful lot of data going up and coming back down. So, uh, and the clouds come in two flavors. There's the free ones where you're either going to be peppered with advertising or they're going to be uh, monitoring what you're doing and using that information to sell to somebody else about what you're doing and where you are and what's going on. So if you're getting free cloud service, chances are they're monitoring what's going on. If you're paying for cloud service, you're probably not going to be getting all those ads and uplinks and downlinks and all that sort of thing. So be aware of what's going on. But either way, cloud's going to be moving data up and down. So downloads, uploads, streaming, streaming video, right? You go to YouTube, click on any video, and they start streaming down that video. Um, OTA is over the air, and people seem to have forgotten, remember back in the last century, TV antennas? They're still there, and only they're better. So down, the closest one in Denver is behind School of Mines up on Lookout Mountain in Golden. And there are still all those TV antennas there, but now they're sending high definition video out. And with an antenna, here's an indoor video antenna. This one's about 20 bucks. And I hooked this up at my house, put it in a window, couldn't get much of anything because my neighbor's house was right there, you know? So I got an extension cord and I moved it to the window closer to the front of the house and I got a few channels and then I got some cardboard boxes and set the thing up high and all of a sudden I got plenty of video channels from Denver. You get all the, ra all the broadcast channels, NBC, ABC, PBS, Fox, all of those things. Uh, I counted 54. All right, some of them are in a language I don't speak. Some of them are a religion I don't attend on Sundays. <laughs> so, um, and some of them are trying to sell me stuff on Home Shopping Network, all right? But all of the ones that you, you're normally using are available here. Um, I decided I didn't want to have all of this stuff sitting in my window, so I went out and bit the bullet, and for 40 bucks, I got a really nice roof-mounted antenna from Radio Shack, which I bolted onto my roof. And now I get all of those stations crystal clear. So let's talk about before fiber. So one of your options is over the air with an antenna. Um, or if you're uh, hooking up to a cable TV system, You'll have something, this is an old one, so it's big. You'll have some box that comes from the Dish Network or Cable or CenturyLink, and that will hook up to coax or whatever they're um, putting into your house. And this does several things. It, it provides the connection. There's also usually in there a digital video recorder, so a disc that will record your shows so that you can watch them whatever you want to. And on some of the newer ones, there's also a Wi-Fi router in there. So it'll be sending information via Wi-Fi. Um, so you're going to pay money if you're hooked up to cable or dish or whatever. Uh, and depending on uh, what system you're hooked up to, uh, after a movie's been in a theater, you can either go out and buy the DVD uh, or your Blu-ray disc and watch that. Or you can download the thing. It's, a lot of them call it uh, video on demand and pay a little money for that um, show that you're looking at. 
or you may go to a streaming place uh, think, and download the uh, video there. So, questions? You guys are being real quiet. Hey. Uh, DVR, uh, what? So the question is, you know, how does this DVR thing work? And what John said is, um, when he uh, cut the cord to, was it cable, right? He had to turn this box back into them. All right. So he went out and bought his own DVR, and it comes with a little remote control that shows up on the TV, and you say, I want to record, you know, Downton Abbey, you know, uh, when it comes up and, and shows on TV, and you pick it off the menu, and it'll record the thing, and then you can come home whenever you like and watch it, and it'll play it back from the disc in the box. The question is, how does it know when it's going to happen and all of that kind of stuff? Um, is yours hooked up to the internet? Has it, yes, it has a pre channel guide. There's a channel guide that hooks up from the internet, and the channel guide tells you it's just like, used to be TV guide, right? <laughs> you know? Push the button on what you want to watch, and it'll record it. And so it, that's how it knows what's going on there. So the signal is coming over either the internet or the, the um, antenna on your roof, and that's what's getting recorded on your DVR. So. Okay, um, the big holdout until extremely recently was sports, and sports are always live, and sports are valuable, and so the companies that control what channels the sports are on are very covetous of uh, their sports, and they're very proud of them, uh, and if you want to get them online, NFL was 300 bucks a year, right? But that's changing, and things are changing very rapidly. So um, I'll get to that in a second because we want to talk about content. Uh, but before we do that, we'll, we'll couple more vocabulary items here. So your typical setup is going to have coax. which is this kind of stuff with the round connector. And this has got one piece of copper down the middle, and then it's got a little sheath of copper around the outside. And so this is called coax, and this is what cable comes in on. And that will come to a box like this. And then once it's in your house to hook up to internet and all that, you use um, ethernet cords. And this is an ethernet cord. It looks like the cord that you would expect to go to a phone, except it's fatter. The little clip for the phone is skinnier and it only has four wires in it. This has got eight. So this is good for internet stuff, hooking up your uh, computers, all that. One of your options is phone and you can get what's called VoIP, Voice Over Internet Protocol, and your phone can be run over the internet. And so that's a possibility, that's an option. Another option over here is a Wi-Fi router, and Wi-Fi router gives you wireless connection throughout your house. Wi-Fi runs about 100 feet, and so you can connect lots of devices via Wi-Fi, your phone, your tablet, your laptop computer, and um, other devices like your DVRs, some of those will uh, do Wi-Fi. So we talked about the cables, we talked about the Wi-Fi, and one other option here is called Bluetooth. Bluetooth is another wireless way of connecting devices together. The good news about Bluetooth is, um, you connect two items together and they are linked to each other and nobody else. And this is called pairing. If you've ever seen somebody that has the little headset stuck in their ear, so that is a Bluetooth device that is paired to their cell phone. And it's that device and that cell phone only, you don't want anybody else breaking in on the conversation. And Bluetooth will go about 30 feet. So it's shorter range and it's specific, what, you know, get two devices hooked up with each other. So now on to content. 
So when John had cable hooked up, he had 500 channels coming into his house, right? Did you watch all 500 all at once like this? <laughs> uh, and it turns out that when you actually watch what people do, they usually have about seven, seven channels that are their favorites that they watch all the time. So you need to know what your viewing habits are because what's going to happen is you're going to change the way that you pick the content that you're going to watch on television. And you can compare this to previously you were at a buffet table and there was everything was available. Now you're going to be ordering a la carte. So you're going to say, I want that channel and I want that channel and I want that channel. So um, you get to pick and choose what you want and how you get it. So what do you get from Nextlight? So you get a connection and the connection that you get is to the internet. And <clears throat> What you're going to see is a gray box just like this on the outside of the house. So depending on whether they come off of a telephone pole or dig a trench, it doesn't have to be very wide because this is the uh, piece of plastic that's around the uh, fiber that's going to go down under the ground. And this one you'll notice has a copper wire taped to it every once in a while. What's that for? So that when you come back and later you're going to put in an underground sprinkler system, the metal detectors have something they can detect. Because the metal detectors can't detect glass and plastic. <laughs> so um, this is what's going to go to the uh, outside of your house. And it's actually got extra loops of fiber in here in case you need to stretch things out, move things around, whatever. And then there will be a hole through the wall of your house and the fiber will come in and it goes to this box here. And this box here brings the fiber in and then connects to Ethernet cables. So they snap right in here. If I get them right side up. All right, so the Ethernet cables can also do a gigabit. So these, these guys can, can run the um, signal as fast as you get it from uh, Nextlight into everything else in your house. Yes, ma'am. The question was standard Ethernet cables, and the answer is there's a difference. And you need to read carefully on the cable. The old versions were called Cat 5 or Category 5. And the new ones, if you want to get all of the speed, is called Cat 6. So you need Cat 6 cables. So this device here is called the ONT or Optical Network Terminal. That's this device right here. And for uh, a little extra money, you can get phone service. And if you get phone service, you get this box here, which is a big battery. And it's a battery backup so that if electricity goes out, you still have phone service. So, um, let's see. So the point is, what you're getting for $49.95 a month right now is you get a gigabit of data connected to your house. You can get the optional phone service. What you're not getting is video. All right, so we need to talk about, um, first of all, just a little thing about the phone service. Um, it includes this battery backup your support for the phone service and all of your fiber optic service is from the local Longmont Power and Communications folks down on um, Sherman. And those people are right there and they're the ones that answer the phone and give you your support. Uh, the other thing is when you get the phone service, the internet is everywhere. 
And if you use the phone to dial 911, the internet doesn't know where you are. So what happens here is they register your phone to your address so that when you pick up and dial 911, it goes to the Longmont Police Department and not some police department somewhere else. What does 25 bucks get you? It gets you continental US and Canada. So those are all considered local calls. I mean, you're, you're not paying for any of that. Um, if you start doing uh, overseas calls, there's probably gonna be a charge for that. Here's a normal fiber optic system. So you, here's your hookup to next light. And now we come to the concept of what are you gonna watch on your TV? And what that's going to require is a smart TV. So what's a smart TV? Um, a smart TV is a TV that actually has a computer inside of it that is able to go onto the internet to connect to various channels so you can see the programs that you want. And remember, we're talking about a la carte. So you're going to connect to a specific individual channel. And TV, smart TVs, if you, if you have a dumb TV right now, you can smartify it, all right? <laughs> so there's various ways to do it. Here is a wonderful thing. This is referred to, by the way, as a dongle. <laughs> And this is from um, Google, and it's called Google Chrome, Chromecast. And you plug this into the side of your TV, and this is actually a computer. And this one knows how to talk to 60 different channels. And if you go to the website for Chromecast, they'll tell you what all of those channels are. Um, here's another one. This one's called Roku. Do we have Roku up here? Yes. And this is a little bit uh, beefier Smartifier, and it has 1,800 channels that it can connect up to. Another possibility is Apple TV. So this one is controlled through iTunes. If you've ever played with iTunes and done all your music and all that stuff, it also does all the video. And um, so anything that's available on iTunes, including major movies and all that kind of stuff, and all of the music that you've been playing with um, comes off of this. This one's a hundred bucks. You pay a hundred bucks for this once. Now you put it on your system. It's got an HDMI connector that goes to your TV and it hooks up either through ethernet, so you can plug that guy in here, or it works off of Wi-Fi. And how much is the Chromecast? Oh. This one, 29 bucks. Uh, Roku's about 100, I think. Apple TV is about 100. Um, the other thing that works, uh, all of the recent versions of Blu-ray players, so you wanna play the little disc, this has a drawer that pops out, and you can play your, your Blu-ray or DVD discs in here, but this has also got the smarts in it. So this will hook up, and it's, I don't know how many channels, but um, tons. Each is different. That one is $59 at Best Buy. Yeah, this is a Sony $59 Blu-ray, and I'm sure there are hundreds, if not thousands of channels that this thing's connected up to. So once you've got any one of these devices hooked up, all of a sudden you have the ability to hook up to any of these and many more channels. So, because all of these guys send out their channels over the internet. And that's what you're doing, is you're hooking up over the internet to download, stream, watch all of these channels. Yeah, the question is, new smart TVs that are available now in the stores, you don't need these devices. Because they have all that inside the TV now. So the uh, little thing about Sling, um, Dish, TV is uh, the company that is about to offer Sling. They just announced it last week. And what they're offering is ESPN, which is a big breakthrough because now you can start to get the sports 
on this. It isn't quite available yet and nobody's sure what the price is gonna be, but this is the trend. The trend is gonna be, you're gonna be able to get everything over the internet. Uh, a couple of months ago, maybe even just one month ago, HBO announced they were going to allow you to get direct HBO uh, content over the internet. Now before, if you were on cable, if you wanted to get HBO, you had to buy the bundle that had HBO in the middle of 20 other channels, which you didn't watch, right? <laughs> so now you're able to go a la carte and it's gonna be a little bit each month and you're gonna have to manage it. You're gonna have to sign up, log in, give them your credit card number, they're gonna take it out every month, that sort of thing. You're gonna to have to manage all that yourself. Once. Once. Well, once on and once off, you know. <laughs> if you decide to change it or, and you gotta watch out for things. Um, I was on and I got a new credit card from my bank with a new number. Ooh, you gotta go in and you gotta log into each one of those accounts and make sure you update your credit card number, that sort of thing. Otherwise, all of a sudden it goes away and you're wondering, what happened to my channel? All right. So, here's how you get your content after you get fiber. You gotta get a digital antenna. And my advice is, get the best one you can and stick it as high as you can. Make sure it's got a direct contact, contact with um, Golden Colorado. Yes, ma'am. A great option is if you drop Right, so this, so what she's saying is you had a dish or you had cable. Um, the coax is already there and going into your house. Use it. You know, just take your new antenna that you're getting and, and screw that right on to the old coax that was there. So take advantage of what's there and uh, go get the big cable ties and hook everything up and you're, you're set. So it's less work than, than you, you think. You know, it's, it's pretty easy. The DVR is optional, but John likes his, he bought his. And um, so many of those programs are gonna be available in the cloud and you're gonna be able to stream them, that sort of thing. Uh, movies and TV series are gonna be live over the air via your uh, antenna, or you can buy a DVD and watch all 20 um, shows of the HBO program that was on last season. Um, and you can watch all that. Right now, sports is pretty much over the air, but as we say, things are changing fast. You'll be able to start getting these things through Sling and other stuff. This is the HBO and the Sling announcements are going to start the whole campaign and everybody else is gonna get on the bandwagon real soon. Last year, the only time that I wasn't able to watch the Broncos live was Monday Night Football and that's on ESPN. And so I had to go down to the mayor's bar and buy two beers and sit there to watch the Broncos on Monday night. You know, uh, it was real tough, but I was able to do it. <laughs> this year you'll be able to get ESPN online. This year I'll be able to get ESPN. So here's a comparison for you. Uh, old version, average for content, not internet, not phone, but just TV content, the average over cable is 123 bucks a month. And the little asterisk is that came off of tomsguide.com, which is an internet uh, site that tracks and measures all of this kind of stuff. So let's say that you picked what you wanted to do, you're getting all this stuff free over the air from your antenna, but you're paying nine bucks a month for Netflix, $8.25 a month for Amazon Prime, $7.99 for the HBO Direct Access, and every once in a while you go out and splurge and buy a DVD. So, using your a la carte selections now, this example here is 50 bucks a month, which is, bottom line, less than half of what you would pay. So that's why we're excited about cutting the cord. So, um, there's one other aspect of getting new high-speed stuff, 
which is you may want to upgrade some of your equipment. And so if you don't do anything, you're going to see an increase in speed, a big increase in speed, five to 10 times what you had before. But if you really want to get everything, you want to start going through and upgrading your equipment and start thinking about the weakest link in your system. It's like a chain and whatever's the slowest part, you want to upgrade that part first. So, um, got to get your antenna. I'm saying get the best one you can. That's yours. That's in your house. Oh, yeah. This is, this is my house. <laughs> my antenna. <laughs> and the little wire right here, it used to go to Comcast. <laughs> so I just used the same one. <laughs> um, one of the things that's probably the, um, that is changing the fastest and so is probably suspect at your house is the Wi-Fi router. So <clears throat> this is a new Wi-Fi router. And what you're looking for, all you have to know is this little number right here when you go into the store or you order online, and that's 802.11, and the magic letters are AC. So that's the current fast spec for Wi-Fi routers. Uh, it used to be B and it used to be N. If your old router says B or N on it, it's probably a good bet you need to uh, upgrade. And they come in various flavors. So here's one that goes from $90 to $200 and it's just what kind of features they have in there. One of them will be, you know, how, much, how many connections they got on the back. Um, the funny looking one over here on the right with the four little fingers sticking up, it has this new feature called beam forming, which is pretty cool. So beam forming, let's see, I'm gonna do a little demo here. Can I pick on you? Okay. Close your eyes, I'm not gonna do what you think I'm going to. <laughs> What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clap my hands and I want you to point to where I clap my hands, okay? Over here, pretty good, huh? Over here, you can open your eyes now. So how were you able to figure out? Yeah, your ear knows it's louder over here than it was over here and it came in first over here and a split second later over here. So the little antennas on this Nighthawk router are doing the same thing. They're going, oh, the signal strength is stronger from this direction and it hit this one before it hit this one. And so they actually can change the configuration on the machine to actually say, I'm going I'm to focus everything this way. So pretty neat little thing. Gives you a stronger signal, can go a little bit farther. Yes, sir. Are you, I have an update actually. Some stuff. So normally what would happen is the ONT, hold up the ONT. ONT. That would come in, fiber hooks into that. You would take a cat, category 5 cable and plug it into the back of this and plug that into one of these to get uh -huh. wireless in your house. However, what's about to happen is that ONT that he's holding in his hand, uh, within the next four, four months, five months, um, that will have the wireless built into it from LPC. So you won't need to do this. But it is four, five, six months out. So if you're getting it today, the fiber, you'll need to know about this if you want wireless. If you don't get it for four, five, six months, this will probably be irrelevant. You'll just come in your INT. So there's, okay, three different steps. There's CAT5, and there was CAT5E, and then there's CAT6. CAT5E is supposed to be able to do a gigabit but um, the difference between CAT5E and CAT6 is better shielding. And so this is the more reliable one, the CAT6. Yeah, and you want to get it because it's, it's the best we can get right now. Yes? yes sorry. Question was, if, if, uh, if I get my service now and six months later they come out with a better box, how's that going to work? And our answer is, we're not absolutely sure, but, you know, who knows? They may have a trade-in programmer. Well, they'll have some sort of policy. Yeah. There's another question in the back. Yes. Um, 
Yes. The, the question was, do the better routers have further reach? They'll do better. They'll do better. I, I'm now able with this new deluxe router to actually get a signal in my garage, whereas before I wasn't getting the signal in my garage. This is like one of the things that you want to look at first is make sure you got your fastest Wi-Fi. And then we got the old and busted Cat 5 and the new hotness Cat 6. All right. And uh, so we're talking about the uh, links in the chain. And the last link in the chain is your new computer system, because your old computer system may not be able to get up, keep up with the speeds that are coming down off the fiber. Especially if you're like my brother, I think his is from 1992 and he's running Windows 3 on it or something, I don't know. Uh, optional, right? Get yourself a digital video recorder so you can see the, uh, your computer expense bill going up a little bit here. So each one of these things is gonna cost a little bit. So um, how do you check this out? We've been using speedtest.net. So it's an online website that you go to. And my advice is only click on this button here. The rest of these are ads, <laughs> right? And they'll want to help you out by downloading something on your computer. You, you don't want to do all that. Just begin test, right? Now, the other thing you can do is if you hover over any one of these little dots, that's where various servers are. So you're right here, Longmont, this is Denver. And if you hover over this, four or five servers will show up in Denver, and you should pick one and always do your tests with that server so you're getting very consistent results all the time because servers will change their characteristics. And this will run through a test, and it'll tell you um, how many gigabytes of data are going up and coming down into your system that your computer is able to, to process. So my experience has been the day that I turned off Comcast and plugged in Nextlight, I went from 15 megabits to 79 that day without changing anything. So then I went out, bought a new high-speed router, it got up to about 130, right? And then I went through and changed everything from Cat 5 to Cat 6. And then I bit the bullet and bought a new computer. I got a new laptop. I'm now running at about 280 megabits, which is fast, people. <laughs> it's very fast. The changes in my life, how many people have Netflix, play on Netflix? How many people watching Netflix have ever had it go quick, rebuffering? I've never gotten that message since I got next slide. I'd never see it. It's never a problem. The other thing that's happened in my life, which I, I, is very subtle, is people would ask me a question and I would go, oh, I probably need to go to Wikipedia and look that up, right? And it would be a process of going somewhere, logging onto Wikipedia, waiting for that page to come up, and then typing in my question, and then have it waiting for the answer to come down. Now what happens at my house is I always have a tab open to Wikipedia, and if I have a question, I have the answer. There's no waiting. And I scare my uncle, who lives in Gunnison, Colorado, because we talk on the telephone, and while we're talking about stuff, I give him the answer. <laughs> you know, he said, how did you know that? You know, he's a big fan of volcanoes. And we were talking the other day about the volcano in Hawaii that's been, you know, eating up cities and doing stuff like that. And he said something about, yeah, I wonder what's going on with that. And I went, Oh, the map says that it's already eaten up, and it's added 128 acres of land to the He says, how do you know that? <laughs> you know, <laughs> because that information is now always available. I've also become very jaded and loose and easy with my megabytes. I have a 
project that I'm working on that has an Excel spreadsheet that is huge, which includes pictures and all that other kind of stuff. And when I'm at home, I open up that spreadsheet and it pops up and I start working on it. I went to visit my uncle in Gunnison. I checked into a hotel with internet service and I sat in my room and I opened up that thing and it didn't work. It didn't come on. And I'm going, what's going on with this thing? And the answer was I looked down at the bottom and the little thermometer was going 15% downloaded, 18% downloaded, 20, and it took it. I went out and got a cup of coffee <laughs> and came back before the thing opened up. So you really get jaded. Current technology is not up to the speed that we're being offered. And it's going to happen. And we want to be in the kind of technology, and this is where Longmont is just shining, is Longmont is giving us not only the ability to have this speed now, but this whole system is designed to get faster. The economic impact of this is going to be astonishing also. I already know of a couple of companies. Uh, one I visited is called Computer Terrain Mapping. So these are people who shuffle a lot of data up and down. They're downloading tons of Census Bureau data to make maps of all of that kind of stuff. And they move to Longmont specifically because they want to be in a place where they can get a gigabit. And for them, it's actual money. It's how long am I sitting at my desk waiting for this data to download so that I can start working on it. And we're going to see more and more people coming in Somebody said to me at one of the meetings I went to, it says, I'm surprised that financial institutions, stock traders, and all that sort of people aren't already starting to flock into Longmont where they can get to stuff faster than everybody else. And the other reason was Longmont has really cheap electricity. Yep, and it's reliable. reliable. <laughs> You're responsible once they get it into the house and have the signal to this box. You're on your own and you get to hook up everything else. Well, and I mean the, the, the fiber. Okay, yeah. Outside of the house and into here, they take care of that. And by the way, no installation fee. And the reason for that is because, remember, we voted for the bond issue that pays for all this stuff, and that bond issue is getting paid off by the $49.95 a month that everybody's getting paying. $49.95 a month. Right? That's um, very important. If you live in Longmont and you own a house or you rent a house, you should get it as soon as it's available. You have 90 days to get it. If you don't get it, it's $99 a month. If you do get it, the $49.95 a month stays with you and with your house for the, for the entire time that, that you live here and it stays with the house forever. So it will make your house worth somewhere between four to $7,000 more having that associated with your house. We've already heard of people asking, does that house have the uh, $49.95 deal attached to it? Because that's how it works. It's attached to your house now. So that, that uh, special price will never go up. The, the special price may change over time, but currently the $49.95, if you get that now, that's what it's gonna be for as long as that house um, exists. So get it, do and not this, hesitate. This is not an introductory offer that a year later is gonna bounce up. This hey, is Comcast. This is not, <laughs> not CenturyLink or Comcast. This is a right. company that cares about you. You own this network. It's owned by us. It's owned by the, the residents. And whereas you, you don't have the ability to say anything about what Comcast is gonna charge you, if something happens with this and you have a concern, you get to beat up on your city council members and they are the ones right okay so john says okay i got the system i got it in i want to do other fancy stuff how do i go where do i go what do i do there are several resources in town thank you for this question forgot this stuff um, one of them is there's a group over at the senior center that is a computer what would you call them club well, they're really, they actually provide tech support. And they, they do charge, but uh, they provide tech support at many different levels. A lot of them are retired engineers.
from you know different um, communication companies and software companies and IBM. These guys are heavyweights. So so they actually really know what they're doing. That's one place. Yeah. Um, there's several other places in town. One of the guys, uh, we did this last night over at the public library. One of the guys who was there, his name is Paul Humphrey, and he's a local guy. I think there's some brochures on the back table. And he has a company called Mobius Productions, and he will actually do the house call and come in and help you figure out what you need and recommend hardware and all that kind of stuff. Um, of course, there's places like Best Buy that have the Geek Squad, you know, and they charge money, but they'll come out to the house and do all the kind of stuff. And if you start looking, the Chamber of Commerce probably lists another three or four businesses in town who are willing to come out and help you. So here we go, summary. Um, you only get one shot at the $49.95 deal, take it, do it. Uh, you'll get a letter in the mail that says, we have installed in your neighborhood, it's now available, sign up now. And if you sign up within 90 days after you get that letter, you get the low price. My recommendation is do it. This is as good as it gets, folks, and it's gonna get better. And the big problem that you're going to face individually is you're going to have to manage your own content. You're going to be buying things a la carte and you're going to have to figure out what you want to buy and you're going to have to sign up and register for each one of those things individually. And as we said, uh, you're probably going to see some expenses for other equipment that you're going to upgrade, but it comes with the territory and you were going to buy a new computer anyway, right? <laughs> Uh, we should do a little advertisement for Tinker Mill and tell you that, you know, we developed this course in collaboration with the city because we want you to be uh, aware of what's going on. We're also offering this for citizens in general, any resident of town. We did one last night at the library. We've got a couple planned at the Senior Center coming up in March. And we want to continue this series. So. We want to know what we can uh, do that would be useful to you. So if you have good ideas, please let us know. We've had a couple, one, one person came up and said they want to know about, how do I do internet security? You know, how do I make sure my kids aren't watching what they're not supposed to be watching? How do I make sure that information's not leaking and all that kind of stuff? So we're thinking about doing something like that. We had another request was, there's 127 apps on my phone. I have no idea what 124 of them do. <laughs> like so, yeah. <laughs> so um, any other ideas, we would welcome those, yes. Home automation. Home automation, all right. Excellent idea. So I can turn lights on and off. Turn lights on and off. But, but I, want, I want to do more than that. Right, and motion detectors and all of that other kind of stuff. Yeah, we, we have a group called Tinker Homes, which is a, a little subset of Tinker Mill that um, uh, works on that. The last project they worked on was an automatic locking door for a chicken coop that would shut down at night <laughs> so the foxes can't get in. And when the sun hits it in the morning, it releases the little pins and the chickens can go out and run around. So they're, they're doing stuff like that all the time. So that's a good um, suggestion and yes. So noted. Anything else? Thank you so much. A pleasure. <laughs>